What does it mean to serve the Lord? That's a darn good question, isn't it? Especially since it's Lent. Right off the bat, we start thinking about the things that we could do and all of the things that we should be doing for God. And that's because, as cheesy as it sounds, we've learned how to be human doings and not human beings. It was one of the most terrible temptations Jesus faced in the desert, the temptation to power, to feed the poor, to take control of the world so that he could bring justice into it the temptation to do, when the reason he had been born into the world was to be who he is, the incarnation of living love. He came so that we could see the face of mercy and be saved. So maybe serving the Lord isn't about doing. Maybe it's really about being. I was talking to this really pro-life guy one time on the radio. Now, I'm plenty pro-life, but this guy was one of the really obnoxious ones. You know, the ones who say any woman who would have an abortion is a murderer. Such a beautiful witness to Christ. Anyway, I took it as long as I could. Then I couldn't stand it anymore. He said, you know, Jesus loves these women. His heart is broken for them. So many of these women made this terrifying decision in a moment in which they were filled with fear. So many of them were surrounded by other people who were filled with fear. Other people who cared more about doing what seemed easy than helping them to choose what was good. He longs for them to turn around and see how much he loves them. He longs to let him love them. He longs to give them the forgiveness that he's been carrying for them. He longs to gather up the broken pieces of their hearts so that he can make them whole again, so that they can hear him whisper, Behold, I make all things new. Okay, six months later, I was in Minneapolis giving a retreat, and afterwards there was this woman who came up to talk to me. She was all shiny. She told me that that morning she had been listening to the radio in bed, and when she heard what I had to say, she, she fell out onto the floor weeping, because 16 years before, she had had an abortion and she was sure that God was so disappointed in her that he turned his eyes away from her. That morning, she realized he'd been standing next to her bed every morning for 16 years, waiting for her to let him love her, waiting for her to let him give her the forgiveness that he was already carrying for her. That afternoon, she called around and found a priest who would hear her confession. And God is merciful. Uh, she found a good priest. At the end of her confession, she wanted a big penance. Isn't that what we do, you know? Uh, we know that we don't earn his forgiveness, but somehow uh, we think if we do something hard, then we're kind of helping him out. But this priest was so beautiful. He stood in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. And he said with such mercy, you've been living your penance for the last 16 years. Now go and be free in the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. That day, I saw Jesus standing in front of me alive on the face of this beautiful woman set free. She'd been to Mass every day for six months. You see, she let Jesus love her. She let him transform 
that grievous wound of her sin, into the door his mercy rushed through. She let him roll away the stone that was keeping her in the tomb of shame and condemnation and death. And she followed him into resurrection. You know, Friedrich Nietzsche once said, I might have been able to believe in the message of Christ if Christians looked resurrected. I can promise you, everyone who encounters this shiny, glorious, beautiful, splendid, alive, compassionate woman, everyone who encounters her sees the resurrection. Everyone she speaks to, everybody she holds, everybody she gathers up into her life, touches mercy, sees hope shining, and hears love who whispers, Behold, I make all things new. Each one is so deeply served when they meet her because they have found Christ. So, my friends, do you wish to serve the Lord? Give him the gift he wishes beyond all else. Give him this Lent, your weakness, your sins, your wounds. Let him transform them into a living encounter with breathtaking mercy. Let him roll away the stone that keeps you in the tomb of your shame and guilt and deathly condemnation. Let him make you new. Then wake up in the morning, unveil your face and step all shiny into your day. There is no greater service you can give to him than to be Christ for everybody you meet today.